Hello everyone, I am Matt Williamson. How are you? It is Niners week. It's time to dig into the nitty gritty, to say the least, of this opponent. How Steelers match up to him. Today, I want to introduce you to the San Francisco 49ers. I don't think you're going to like what you hear all that much, but you're going to have to anyways. Great opponent. I am psyched for this game. So I am going to hit you like we did last year. You guys seem to love it with all these stats. We'll go Steeler offense tomorrow, Steeler defense after that, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go. San Francisco finished last year 13 and four. They won their final 10 games. Steelers finished nine, eight, four game winning streak of their own. Steelers were outscored by their opponents though, by 38 points while the Niners plus 173 point differential was the best in the league over 17 games. They outscored their opponents by 117, 173 games over 17 games, usually win by like 10 points. See what I'm saying? However, after the Steelers week nine by the Steelers were seven and two with a plus 39 point differential. All right. Time of possession. Only the Commanders, Browns, and Bengals were better in time of possession than San Francisco. But the Steelers finished the season's sixth best, holding the ball for 31-18 per game. And remember, they were worst in the league to start the season for the first month. Turnover differential. Not surprising, this, a lot of this podcast is going to put, paint the Niners in a very nice light from last year. Steelers plus third, or I'm sorry, San Francisco's plus 13 point dif- or turnover differential was the best in the league, but only eight teams had a better differential than the Steelers, whose defense had the most interceptions in the league. They were tied to San Francisco, go figure, with 20, but the fewest fumble recoveries. Dallas was the only defense to create more turnovers than the Niners. Only the Giants and Lions had fewer giveaways than San Francisco. The Steelers' offense was fifth best in turnovers. The Giants and Lions were also the only offenses with fewer interceptions thrown than San Francisco. The Raiders' offense was the only offense that lost fewer fumbles than the Steelers. After the Steelers' week nine bye, Pittsburgh only turned the ball over five times. Tons of stuff to take away there, but basically the nuts and bolts of it were San Francisco was the best and Steelers weren't far off in terms of turnover differential last year. Hopefully, that's that's not always a sticky stat, though, year to year. Last year, the Niners played just five games against an opponent to finish the season with a winning record. That's unbelievable. And they were 4-1 and one in those games with their only loss coming to the Chiefs, who won the Super Bowl. Only played five games to finish the season with a winning record. So, along those lines, by DVOA, the Niners played the second easiest schedule in the league last year. The Steelers played the second most difficult San Francisco's offense faced the easiest slate of defenses. Pittsburgh's faced the fourth most difficult. The Niners' defense faced the fifth easiest slate of opposing opponent offenses. The Steelers played against the fourth most difficult. So, a lot of bad stats. Well, not bad, but a lot of really impressive stats for the Niners up until this point of the podcast. But it has to be noted, those that they played against... Couldn't have been much easier. Really, the Eagles and Niners had a very, very easy schedule, and they took full advantage of it. But I want everyone to realize, too, I mean, Steelers was one of the most difficult on both sides of the ball in the entire league. All right, I'll just take a quick break, a couple more notes here, and then we're going to talk special teams. We'll leave uh, offense and defense for later in the week. All right, so we just broke talking about they did have an easy slate of opponents. There's just no way around it. The division wasn't very good. They didn't play a lot of top teams other than the Chiefs. Only five teams ended with a winning record that they played against. And they blew them out. I mean, again, they scored more points, the best point differential, best turnover differential in the league. I mean, that stuff isn't fluky. They won a league-high 11 games by more than one score. And only one team had a lead at halftime more often than the Niners in 2022. So the Eagles are the other ones I keep bringing up because they both are similar. They were the final four in the NFC. But both those teams 
always, 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 <laughs> more or less, had pretty substantial halftime leads. Go in, you know, work on your adjustments, all that. But what a bind it is for the opponent. You know, like, man, we're down 10 in San Francisco, and now we got to block Bosa and this pass rush, and, you know, and the Niners can run on us. So, Halftime leads with this team in particular is very, very important, and it'll be very important in week one for the Steelers. How about this, though? I, I didn't know this until just this week. Only four NFL franchises have a winning record in each of the past four seasons. The Chiefs, the Bills, Miami, I was a little surprised by that, and your Pittsburgh Steelers. Haven't went, everyone talks about the Tomlin streak. We know about that. And it's, and it's very impressive. But it just shows you how hard it is to even have a winning record four years in a row. I mean, Chiefs and Bills, yeah, they're powerhouses. Steelers and Miami. Wow. The Steelers, I mean, this, this is something you probably, we've harped a lot, a lot. The Steelers only scored two touchdowns last year from outside the red zone. Think about that. I mean, from the 21-yard line or further. Only two of their touchdowns came from that area. That was the fewest in the league. San Francisco had 16 of them. Only the Eagles and Raiders had more. And you don't even think of San Francisco as a bombs away, Tyreek Hill over the top, you know, type of team. It's a lot of after the catch. It's a lot of, you know, hit a guy 15 yards downfield. He breaks a tackle, scheming it up, all that good stuff. So, Impressive stuff, though. I mean, and again, something the Steelers have to get much, much better at. Like a couple of little special teams nuggets. They're always hard or early in the year because special teams doesn't usually stick from year to year as much as you would think. And right now, the Niners are having massive field goal kicker problems, which I think is worth talking about. Um, they... Here, I'll just read that stat. The San Francisco's first draft pick this year was used on Jake Moody with the 99th overall selection. Moody is the earliest drafted place kicker since 2016. But when I'm recording this, they don't even know who their kicker is going to be. You know, so that could come. I expect this to be a close game. I'm not even sure who I'm going to pick yet, but I think it's going to be a close game. And Boswell versus whoever's the kicker on the road in week one for the Niners is a Big deal to me. So, of all the field goal kickers in NFL history with at least 100 attempts, Chris Boswell's 86.3% is 11th best all time. He's made, Boswell's made 90% of his attempts or better in five of his eight seasons. So, think about it. If you're at 86% and that's 11th best all time, five of your eight seasons, you've been over 90 it's pretty impressive. But as you can guess, his 71.4% last year was second worst of his career. Boswell also missed five games with a groin injury. Now, I always hate that, well, they're going to be better kicking field goals this year. They have to be. I mean, well, things can get worse. But I have to think Boz, the team as a whole, are probably going to hit somewhere between 82 and 88% of the field goal attempts where last year he was at 71, not to mention the other guys while he was out. So you got to think the field goal percentage of this team is going to go up. And how about this? This is interesting too, and this is the last thing I have for you today. So as a team, the Steelers made 77% of their field goal attempts last year. So actually the guys not named Boswell were better than Boz, who wasn't himself. I think we can all agree on that. So anyways, they made 77% of their field goal attempts last year. The Steelers' opponents <clears throat> made 88%. Now, I've told you this before. The percentage that your opponent puts the ball through the upright have very little to do with you. I mean, unless you block it, you know, I mean, it is, uh, that's field goal luck. I mean, whether you make your own is not field goal luck, that's skill. But whether the opponent puts it through the upright is really field goal luck. So, that was an 11% difference. That was one of the largest discrepancies in the league last year. And those type of things almost always come back to the mean. I mean, it's just, <clears throat> what's the chances that the opponents hit 88% against the Steelers 
through a 17-game schedule over the course of a whole year again. Probably pretty slim. Not to mention, the first team they play has kicker problems. So, I don't do a lot of special teams on here, but I like to throw a nugget out here and there. Look forward to talking to you guys the next couple days about offense and defense. They're even more telling, and they're pretty impressive for the Niners as well. All right, take care.